So now we get to the interesting part here, and here's where we can start to really make some money, and that's this. We start to worry about paying off some of the dates that the debt that we have. The first thing that few people talk to us about is that if we have, and some of you might, multiple credit cards, and those credit cards are a variety of different interest rates, say you have two or three, and you have some that are at the formerly de facto 18% rate, but you also have one at 14%, and maybe unfortunately you had a penalty on one and now you're paying 23 or 30%, some pretty high rate. You can actually shop around a little bit, and you can go to websites, and I'm not plugging it, I'm just saying it's just a point of reference. You can go to bankrate.com, click on credit cards, and they show you all the credit card rates for all credit card issuers in the United States, and you can shop around and find out what you might qualify for. Then you can call up your own credit card company after you found that 9% rate that's flat forever, it's not gonna get jacked up. You can call up your 18% credit card company, you can say, hey, I was shopping around and I've been with you for years, never missed a payment, never been late, you're charging me 18%. This guy over here at Ally Bank or wherever it is, they're gonna charge me 9.9. .9. What's up with that? And they're gonna say, well, I don't know, let me check your records. And you give them your stuff and they say, can I put you on hold for a second? They go away and they come back, and not too surprisingly, they said, you know what, you're absolutely right. You've been a good customer of ours. You haven't been late, and we're gonna convert you over to this program that we have. You go, really? What is that? And they say, well, it's exactly the same rate that you found on bankrate.com, and we call that upset student that called and complained about their rate program, and they just arbitrarily change your rate, because they can, just like the show, the movie, the clip there said they could jack your rate, they can also adjust your rate. If you can't get them to adjust your rate, then it's time to find that lower interest rate card that allows you to move things over without charging you a fee. Very important, no balance transfer fee. And then you do that and you tell your old credit card company, see ya, don't wanna do business with you anymore, Capital One, because you're not in my wallet anymore, or whatever you wanna tell them. And then you keep trading down because things are very competitive now, particularly for people that do good things like pay their bills. Credit card companies want to do business with people that pay their bills. So what should you pay off first? You've got a variety of different cards. What should you pay off first? Highest interest rate makes sense, right? You've got one at 14, one at 18, one at 23. You say, I want to attack the 23. Totally agree with you. Any financial advisor would tell you to do that. I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on it, though. So listen to what I'm about to say, and I'll explain to you why I use this logic. That strategy is absolutely the right strategy unless and until one of those cards, even at a lower rate, gets within the range where you could absolutely get rid of it for good. So now you've got three cards at different rates and this one now is down to 200 bucks and you've got 200 bucks for a change. That's the time to pay off that card, even though it's at a lower rate. And let me tell you why I say that. Two reasons. Once you've paid off that card, that now is money that you can apply whatever you were gonna pay on that card anyway. You can now apply it toward the higher interest rate card. That's number one. That's logical, duh. The other thing you just did in doing that is you just raised your credit score. Because I didn't tell you to close that account. I told you to pay off the card. You just let it sit there. Assuming it has no annual fee, now you've just raised your credit score because you've extinguished a card you didn't close it, it's available credit that you're not using. So you just raised your credit score by doing what I just said. Very few people, A, know their credit score or know what it's comprised of. So let me share with you what it's comprised of. Before I do that, let me tell you the impact of making your minimum payments on a credit card. Let me pull this out just a little bit. Hopefully the cameras can get this a little bit better apologize that I'm covering up the screen. Let me tell you what my assumption is for what I'm about to write down here. This might apply to many of you, but I figured all this out before I came in here to talk to you nice people. The assumption is this, that I owe $1,000 on a credit card that's at 18% interest, which is kind of typical still, unfortunately, these days. And then it's a credit card that requires me every single time I get a bill to at a minimum pay 2% of the balance. So in this case, if I owe $1,000, I'm gonna get a bill in the mail, 
and it's going to say pay anything that you want in excess of twenty dollars two percent of a thousand but you have to pay me at least twenty don't send me less than that the assumption is is that as you pay this down you're going to keep paying only the two percent if that goes down to nineteen dollars you're only going to pay nineteen and eighteen and seventeen you're never going to pay more that's the assumption so if you only pay the minimum and I apologize to the folks over here if I can reorient this just a little bit if I only pay the minimum how long is it going to take me to pay this off just paying the minimum payment do you think it's going to take me two three years four or five years eight nine years 60 months it's about as close to never as you would care because it's going to take me 80 years and this is ludicrous because as I pay it down and it goes down to a four cent payment and a three cent payment this is ludicrous for that reason obviously you'd eventually pay it off but if you did it strictly according to math you would have paid two thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars just in interest to get that thousand bucks so you paid three times as much in interest as the thousand bucks if you only pay the minimum I emphasize if you run the math at some point you say well that's silly I would just pay the five dollars and extinguish it so this is assuming you weren't going to do that if however regardless of what the payment was you sent in twenty dollars every time even if they only ask you for seventeen or fifteen or whatever the case may be then you could suddenly pay it off in seven point eight years so you only picked up about seventy two years just by paying twenty bucks instead of the minimum and you would have paid eight dollars and sixty two cents and try this there are a lot of calculators online which is what I use you can go do this yourself you don't need me to do it and what if and I know you're not rich people and you don't have a hundred dollars to throw at things every month I'm not acting like you are but what if you could come up with another twenty bucks and not send in a hundred but only send in forty even when you only owe twenty or eighteen if you always sent in just forty you would cut that down to 2.7 years and you would pay two hundred and sixty three dollars in interest on your thousand dollars so here's what I want you to think about we haven't known each other very long do any of you know where you could find a very safe investment get the power of compound interest working for you a la Albert Einstein and make 18 percent on your money every single year guaranteed anybody know where you could do that guess what your credit card companies know where they can do that and I'm looking at them because that's what you're giving the credit card company a guaranteed 18 percent return and I don't mean this with any disrespect to them do they think do you think they want you to pay it off quicker why in the world should they they just keep getting those 18 percent checks from you every year on your money where you're getting 0.2 by putting it in a bank so you're getting worse off in a hurry and the way you turn that around is by paying them as much as you can pay them take the difference and have it start working for you